I'm Andrew Hall for CNET, and I'm taking a first look at the Nokia Asha 501. Nokia Asha 501 is part of Nokia's budget range of phones aimed at emerging markets like India and Latin America. It'll be available in Europe, but Nokia has said that it definitely won't be shipping to North America anytime soon, if ever. It has a low-resolution, capacitive touchscreen, uses 2G data networks only, but it has a fun, vibrant, plastic design and a super cheap price tag of $99. If you spend time with any of Nokia's recent phones, the 501 will be quite familiar. It's got a one-piece polycarbonate back that's very reminiscent of the Lumia 520. The back panel is made from one single sheet, so the only seam you'll find on a phone is around the edge of the screen. That help makes it feel very solid and secure. I wasn't able to put it through CNET's usual brutal set of stress tests, but it certainly felt like it could take a knock or two. It's available in a rainbow of garish colours to suit your mood, or more likely, your outfit. It's comfortable to hold, as its 3-inch screen doesn't require you to stretch your palms out. The display has a 320 by 240 pixel resolution, which compared to the full HD smartphones around is pretty poor. You really can't expect that sort of quality for such a cut-down price though. Icons and larger text are all perfectly readable. It's not particularly bright, nor does it have great colours, but again, it does the job adequately for the money. It runs on Nokia's own Asher software, rather than the swanky Windows Phone 8 software you'll find on the more premium Blumia range. It looks fairly simple and has a couple of neat tricks up its sleeve, but it won't appeal to those of you after a more refined, feature-rich smartphone experience. Unlock the phone and you'll be taken to a grid of apps similar to what you'd expect to see in iOS. Swipe either side of the apps and you'll see a scrolling activity log displaying recent apps, activities or recently called contacts. It's pretty easy to operate so it shouldn't scare off the technophobes among you, but it doesn't have the sort of slick, multitasking features crucial to any top-end smartphone. It doesn't have a well-stocked app store either, although some essentials like WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter and Plants vs Zombies are available. It's probably not going to be a huge issue that a lot of data-hungry apps aren't available, as the 501 only uses 2G networks. You won't be able to make use of faster 3G data, and the lightning-fast 4G speeds will only be a fever dream for 501 owners. Sending a quick tweet will just about be doable, but don't try and attach photos or videos unless you want a long wait. Nokia explained that 2G networks are still the most used in countries like India, where the 501 is aimed, so it's perhaps not as big a deal as it first seems. Storage comes in the form of a 4GB SD card, which you can swap out for a bigger one if you'd like. It'll also be available in either a single or dual SIM version if you want to keep two SIM cards on board for easier data roaming. Nokia wouldn't say what processor is on board, we know it's not going to be anything impressive, but it seemed just about capable of providing fairly smooth navigation through the Asher software. With its low-end specs, cut-down price and only 2G connectivity, the Nokia for Asher 501 really isn't aimed at smartphone purists. Instead, it's aimed squarely at emerging markets like India and Latin America. Its cheap price and sturdy build quality might make it a reasonable option to pick up as an emergency festival phone, though. I'm Andrew Hoyle for CNET, and this is the Nokia Asher 501.